In my last video, I explored the essential fatty acids, including a discussion on omega-3s and the implications for diet and supplementation. I arrived at the conclusion that it is not necessary, but prudent, to obtain a certain amount of the pre-formed long-chain polyunsaturated omega-3 fatty acids, EPA and DHA. Today, we're going to be looking at which supplements I actually recommend and why. With this in mind, and considering the huge range of fatty acid supplements out there, it's probably easiest if I start off with what I recommend avoiding. Then we'll move on to considerations in choosing a supplement in descending order of importance, and finally arrive at some supplements I've tried and tested myself and that are easy to get worldwide. Unfortunately, there are many great and emerging brands out there that would easily make the list, but are, as of yet, not widely available. I outlined in my last video why both fish and fish oil are not good places to get EPA and DHA. They are some of the best sources of these nutrients, but they are also terrific sources of many toxic pollutants, including fish oil even when purified with the gold standard molecular distillation method. On that note, one point I didn't make in that video was that we always have to remember why we even want to take these supplements in the first place. The cardiovascular benefits are quite disproven at this stage, thus the main question that remains up for debate is their role in brain health. Some of the pollutants found in fish are neurotoxic, such that fish consumption during childbearing age may actually lower the IQ of offspring overall with the effects of pollutants on the brain seemingly overpowering the beneficial effects of the DHA. Additionally, fish oil supplements are consistently plagued with rancidity problems due to the intensive processing required to make these products, bringing their safety into question. Fish liver oil can also contain large and potentially dangerous amounts of active vitamin A both naturally and artificially added. And we haven't even discussed all the usual problems inherent with animal products such as animal protein, IGF-1, choline, TMAO, acid formation and so on. So overall, fish and fish oil are not good sources of EPA and DHA because of all this baggage. I also want to be clear that I am not recommending ALA omega-3 supplements. There are plenty of non-fish omega-3 supplements on the market such as flaxseed oil that provide the omega-3 fatty acid ALA, but it is only EPA, DHA supplements I am recommending. You should strive to get plenty of ALA from whole food sources like flax seeds and get your omega ratio down to 3 to 1. And indeed, this is the most important message I want you to take from these videos. An EPA DHA supplement is intended to complement this vital facet of diet, not replace it, and supplementing EPA DHA is certainly not an excuse to forget about your ratio. I also do not recommend omega-369 supplements for this reason. We do not need to take an omega-9, and we should be actively trying to reduce our omega-6 intake, as I explained in the last video. I also touched on GLA supplements in that video and gave my rationale for not recommending them in essence because their efficacy is small and more variable between individuals compared with omega-3 supplements. So we are looking for an omega-3 supplement specifically containing EPA and DHA and free from toxic pollution. The most widely available supplements that fit all these criteria at present are golden algae EPA DHA supplements. Indeed, algae is where the fish get these nutrients from in the first place. Another advantage of golden algae supplements over fish oil is that they tend to be much more highly concentrated a higher percentage of the oil they contain consists of the actual EPA and DHA we are interested in, as opposed to other molecules, so we can consume less oil overall to obtain the same amount of the actual nutrients we care about. This also makes the ratio much more in favour of omega-3 to omega-6 compared to various fish oils. Additionally, the algal oil I'd be recommending is much more standardised than fish oil and is produced purely for the omega-3, allowing adjustment of the whole process to freshness and avoidance of rancidity. This lack of standardization in fish oil supplements not only results in variability in quality and purity, but also variability in actual omega-3 content compared with what is claimed on the label. Before we move on to specific supplements, one last thing I'd like to mention is that you should definitely look to buy your supplement online. From what I've seen, these supplements are still a little too pricey to buy in the pharmacy. So what supplements do I recommend? I'm now going to go through some considerations in descending order of importance to help with choosing a supplement. First off, I recommend buying a supplement that contains Life's Omega. Life's Omega was the first golden algal oil to be produced as an EPA DHA supplement. It is the most widely used and is well studied and proven to work. It is produced in an FDA inspected facility under current good manufacturing practices and never comes in contact with the sea, so I think it's the best option. You know it must be good when this is the DHA that is added to infant formula, and tellingly not fish oil. With that in place, I recommend that you get a supplement that contains both DHA and EPA. From what we understand, DHA is the most important for brain health, but the combination of the two is the best studied and is what is recommended by most authorities. Next, we'll look at dose. Following on from the last point, it is important that we look at EPA and DHA content to determine dose, not total omega-3 content. 
Because EPA and DHA are not essential fatty acids, no concrete RDAs can be pointed to to guide dosage. So I recommend going by the European Food Safety Authority's adequate intake level of 250 mg of combined EPA and DHA. Pregnant and lactating women may benefit from 100 to 200 mg more DHA on top of that, so factor that into your decision if you fall into that group. A prudent approach might be to take a double dose of these supplements if pregnant or lactating. On to excipients next. Life's Omega is formulated with small amounts of safe ingredients, but unfortunately the capsules of all these supplements appear to be formulated with carrageenan, since it is the only viable vegan way they can be made at present. This is not ideal, but I wouldn't avoid these great supplements for relatively minor carrageenan concerns, unless perhaps you have gastrointestinal issues. Other than that, the usual rule of the less ingredients the better applies, with one caveat which I will get to later on. Once all of these factors are in place, you can then look at determining which supplement is the best value by looking at price per gram of EPA and DHA. Unfortunately, I can't give any specific recommendations here since prices are always changing, and there may be special offers at the time of purchase and so on. However, if you are looking for some specific recommendations for supplements that fit all of these criteria besides, and that I've researched and bought myself, I'll go through some of them now. I'm going to base these recommendations mostly off what's available from iHerb.com, since in my experience this has proved to be the easiest and cheapest way to get these supplements in Europe. A good all-rounder is the Diva Vegan Omega-3 DHA EPA supplement, boasting 300mg of combined EPA DHA well in excess of the EFSA's recommendation and a nice short list of safe excipients. As a rule it tends to be one of the better value supplements as well, since it compromises on dose slightly compared to other supplements in favour of a higher count. You get 90 capsules per bottle compared to the usual 60. Another great one is Ovega 3. The dose is a little higher with this one at 405mg, but you only get 60 capsules per bottle. It contains the same excipients as the Diva one minus sunflower lecithin. Consider this one if you want to increase the dose a little bit, for example if you haven't supplemented EPA and DHA for a while, or indeed ever, and want to give yourself a little boost. The next one is a very welcome recent addition. The company MyProtein never failed to surprise and impress me with their products, and their new vegan omega-3 supplement definitely fits this bill. It is well dosed at 375mg combined EPA DHA, but its real merit lies in the price. It is by far the best value supplement I have come across that fits all the criteria. Like the others, it is made with Life's Omega, but drops the Sorbitol, Beta Carotene and Caramel in Ovega 3 in favour of the safe sodium carbonate, so it actually has the shortest excipient list as well. However, this comes with a drawback. These antioxidants and pigments were added for a reason, and were obviously doing a good job since there is absolutely no fishy smell from Ovega 3 or Diva. However, there is a definite distinctive fishy odour from the MyProtein supplement, indicating the presence of some oxidation and perhaps the capsule does not protect the delicate Omega 3s adequately. You can actually see the difference. The MyProtein capsules are clear, whereas the other two are dark brown, offering more protection to the fatty acids within. This may however be an acceptable compromise if you want the cheapest supplement or have concerns about some of the excipients I mentioned. I am sure though that one of these three supplements will offer an acceptable balance of compromises to suit almost everyone's needs. Regardless though, I recommend considering all the factors I outlined in this video when choosing a supplement and you won't go wrong. In summary, when choosing an omega-3 supplement we wanted to contain EPA and DHA, not omega-6, 9 or ALA. We want to get it as close to the source as possible to avoid pollutants and other issues. In other words, golden algae based and preferentially life's omega, and at a minimum dose of 250 milligrams. So that's it guys. Hope you found the video informative. If there's anything you'd like clarification on, or you have any questions or comments, post them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. That's it for now though. Talk to you soon. Slauncher.